Good afternoon, everybody. Good morning to you all. My name is Hung Shur, and I am delighted to be with you today for our second lecture in our brand new series on the picture biography, pictorial biography of Master Empty Cloud. That's our new series uh, for Friday afternoon or Saturday morning lecture, and I am coming to you today on Sunday, I'm oh, sorry, Friday, August 18th, 1 p.m. here in California. It is 6 a.m. in Queensland, and I want to say thank you, express my gratitude to the early morning translators into Chinese and into Vietnamese who are helping my lectures go further uh, out of the kindness of their hearts. All right, so uh, Vera from Brazil is going to be requesting Dharma, and uh, <coughs> I'm going to ring the bell three times and invite you all to bow along with me three times, and then we'll ask Vera to request Dharma. So here we go, three bows. Okay, uh, Vera, if you would like to request Dharma, please do it now. Will the Sangha with great virtue out of compassion for the sake of this assembly and all living beings? Please turn the wonderful Dharma wheel to teach us how to live suffering and attain bliss and end birth and death and quickly realize no birth. Namo tasa bhagavato arahato sama sambuddhasa Namo tasa bhagavato arahato samasambuddhasa. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Homage to the blessed, noble, and perfectly enlightened one. Namo sadanto suchedoye alahodi samyao samputoshe. Namo sadanto suchedoye alahodi samyao samputoshe. Mushang shen shen wei miao fa. Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered, even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. All righty. Thank you, Vera, for the Dharma request. Appreciate that. Uh, all the way from Brazil. Uh, I'd like to say as we begin today that the Chochetnyoloni people practice their spiritual connections to the earth and to all creation here on their ancestral land for tens of thousands of years. Today we acknowledge them as traditional custodians and original storytellers of these lands. We offer our respect to their elders past, present, and emerging and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. Chochesno <coughs> <coughs> 
并且向他们过去、现在和新兴的港澳们表示敬意，以及主权从未被割让。所有第一民族人民们表示敬意。Okay, we did that. Good. And we want to do the bell song coming right up. Bell sound wide resounds throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread all throughout the triple world. The wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the Dharma realm with peace. May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. 众生传三千界内，佛法扬万亿国中，共顺其法界和平，利益报他诺后的。Okay, well done. Okay, we've got our righteous beginning. So I mentioned that we have a friend online today from Chenzhou in Fujian, which is where Master Empty Cloud was born. Okay, well you can see his photo, right there,、uh, on your screen, and notice his his beard and his hair.、Uh, Master Empty Cloud regularly、uh, went into seclusion, and when you're in seclusion, you're not required to shave. And also, it wasn't so convenient to shave your head back in China,、uh, where he lived. He lived simply, and、uh, sometimes razors and hot water were just not available. So,、uh, now the tune that I played at the outset,、uh, this one. Grab my banjo again. This this tune. From、uh, a song called "Empty Cloud Wakes Up," which is an English language setting of Master Empty Cloud's Enlightenment poetry, so we'll be we'll be sharing that song、uh, periodically throughout our series. Now, people know, don't need to tell you again, but I will anyway, that we are explaining Master Empty Cloud's picture biography, authored by. Our teacher, Master Shen Hua, and as far as I know, this is the first time people have investigated this text in public like this. If you、um, see here, there is an old version. The, actually, it's the second version. The first one was in Hong Kong. The old version looks like this:、um, two volumes, and you can see. That that's another image on the cover. Do you know that many people report that they dream of Master Empty Cloud looking just like this, that he comes to the dreams of people who are not even Buddhist,、uh, just somehow as he what, Yoshi,、uh, Yoshi Shantong, as he travels around、uh, at at leisure,、um, he. Visits people who he can wake up, so <coughs> and appears to them. So this is this is the original. This is actually the sorry. This is the second version、um, of the biography. The、um, we looked at that last week. Here is here are the contents.、Um, if you go, I'm going to put this in the chat box. If you all. Uh, Any time, you don't have to wait for the lecture to roll around again on Friday. You can go read it yourself right there. Look at the chat box. I put in the link to the website, which will serve as our、uh, teaching material. This is our textbook, and 
when you get to, I want to tell you now, there are people who will get to page, what page is this? There's no page number. Um, <clears throat> stories 101, 102, 103, 104, and they're going to say, ooh, I thought there were 200 stories. What happened to the second half? And in order to get to the second half, you have to go back to the cover and then back one more. You have to actually, I don't think you can get to volume two. We need a link here. Whoever designed the website needs to get in here and add a link. Um, let's see, from the contents page? No, you can't get there from the contents page. See, P. Good, Jim Dry. Nope, you can't. You have to go back out to the main page. I don't think there's a link. Um, she, Fulo, BTTS. No, uh, sorry, we can't get you there. <laughs> okay, what you have to do is go out to drbachinese.org. Go out here, this is the main page, and scroll down, and those of you who don't read Chinese are gonna be stuck here. It's right here, Xian Shang Yue Du. That takes you to all of the publications that are archived <coughs> on DRBA Chinese, that, our website, and you go down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and here is Xia Che. There. That's number two, volume two. And you go to the the Feng Mian, go to the cover, you find the contents starting at 105 all the way to 208, right? So that's tricky, isn't it? I will put the second one in there too. There we go. So there's volume one and volume two. So I know a lot of folks are going to get stuck. Now, that won't uh, bother us until we're halfway through. Um, but just to let you know that on the, the contents page, which is here, ah, I just knocked, went away. There we go. On the contents page of Xian Shang Yue Du, inside of DRBA Chinese. You scroll down. This first big chunk, that's sutras. Uh, the picture biography is in other uh, other books authored by Master Hua. And here it is right here. Shang Te, Xia Te, in Chinese and English. Okay? So, just to let you know. That's how we do it. Okay. There we are. Let's see. Uh, did I? I think I may have outsmarted myself. I did. <clears throat> Let's go back and go to Shang. There we go. Now, here I am on the, the uh, kind of the leading page, and I want to go to contents right there. That's where it is to get to our first story. Now, reminding everybody, Master Hua took Master Empty Cloud's biography in Chinese called his Nianpu, and extracted from it uh, 200 stories. And because Master Empty Cloud lived to the ripe old age of 120, there were plenty of stories to draw from. He commissioned an artist to uh, draw a pen sketch, which you can see right here, of each of those 200 episodes. And they're beautiful illustrations. They're really charming. And then Shifu did the, uh, summarize the event in Chinese and wrote a four-line poem dedicated to each episode. So this is uh, Master Hua's distinct literary style is to come up with a verse uh, to match uh, every situation, whether he's commenting on the, the uh, um, Great Compassion Mantra verses, the Sharangama Mantra verses, the lives of the patriarchs and uh, historical people, um, just events during the day. Master Hua would 
write an essay and then conclude it with a verse. And the verses are brilliant. Uh, people who recognize literary talent and skill are always amazed at Scherfu's spontaneous verses. Just amazing. Okay. Now, the picture here is a little bit small, so as I raise it up, as I ex expand it, enlarge it, uh, it loses resolution. But you can see here is a city wall, a fortress, the fortified wall of the city with a flag on top, and a country gentleman's home uh, outside of the walls. Here's someone doing laundry, Here's someone uh, taking a horse around at the stables. Here is someone arriving in a palanquin, arriving in a carriage. Here is uh, somebody bowing at home with incense. So the time, the year is 1940. 1940. Okay, we're still, we're, Master Empty Cloud has not been born yet. Okay. Every, so that catches us up. Are we all ready? We're ready to begin. Let me take a drink. The name of story number one is Seeking a Son from Guanyin Bodhisattva. The Chinese goes like this. Yun gong lao he shang, su xing xiao, nai liang wu di zhi ho, shi ju hu na, xiang xiang. Fu Yu Tang Mu Yen Shi Ching Dao Guang Chu Nian Fu Yi Ku Ju Chu Shen Wu Yi Min Nian Yu Bu Huo Shang Wu Zi Fu Mu Yu Zi Sui Yi Chen Cheng Ken Che Zi Xin Jin Xiang Qi Zi Yi Cheng Wai Zi Guan Yin Gu Miao Zhong Ah Ok I have to correct myself. And then let's read the verse. To, uh, let's see, how do we do it? I'll, I've read the Chinese. I told you incorrectly. <laughs> That's going to happen a lot. <laughs> Get ready. Uh, let's read the English and then come back and I'll correct myself. The Venerable Master Yun's name was Xiao. His ancestors are from... Fragrant Hills, Lanling, they were descended from Liang Wu Di, the emperor of the Liang Dynasty, the Wu, Emperor Wu of the Liang Dynasty, the martial emperor, whose name was also Xiao. And they had for generations lived at Xiangxiang in not human province, that's a typo, Hunan, Hunan province. His father's name was Yu Tang, and his mother's uh, surname was Yen. So in 1821, the first year of the Daoguang reign of the Qing dynasty, and there were five dynasties that came through Master Empty Cloud's, uh, five reign periods that came through Empty Cloud's lifetime. 1821, his father entered into public service at, in the examination system as a Koju, which was a ranking official. He, in Fujian, he was assigned to the south, so he had to leave Hunan and go down to the south. So he, his father was quite a successful scholar. When the dad, when uh, Mr. Xiao uh, got to be 40 years old, he had no son. And that's said to be the most unfilial of things, is to leave no posterity. Mm to cut the line off. So never mind if you leave home, uh, we won't talk about that. This grieved him and his wife. So with sincere words and sorrowful hearts, they offered incense and sought a son at the Guanyin Bodhisattva temple outside the city. So what did I tell you? I told you this was their home. Wrong. It's not. This is Guanyin temple, Guanyin monastery. I guess if I could read what's over the gate, it's too small. Oh, you know what? I have a paper version. Let me, got a bigger, uh, let's see here. Oh, Guan Yin Miao, I see. So I have a big, the big, 
paper printed edition. I have a set here. It's really clear to see. Guanyin Miao. Okay. That's not a house. I told you wrong. It's a Guanyin monastery. And there's the city wall that they came out from. So the monastery is uh, out in the countryside. Notice these loft, these really tall mountains. Um, is this supposed to be Fujian? I guess so. Yeah. Okay. That's the first. We haven't looked at the verses now. The verse goes, Qi gong shu de zhi shan yin Qian xin qiu zi li zi zun Wan lü cheng qing shui dang nian wei dang nian Yi xin bu lan gan er ying The verse says, Amassing merit, establishing virtue, a wholesome seed was planted. Sincere in heart, they sought a son and bowed to the compassionate one. Ten thousand anxious thoughts were stilled, and only one remained. Single-mindedly, unconfused, they effected a response. So there are plentiful typos and mistakes here. I've found three already. For folks who are paying attention, um, this should be establishing virtue. Uh, this We need a the bowed to the compassionate one but that's okay we i'm taking notes so that we can tell the uh whoever maintains the website to uh do another spell check so okay so comment about the story hmm note <clears throat> excuse me Notice that how important it is to leave behind, uh, <coughs> yeah, how important it is to leave behind posterity, to uh, have children to carry on the family name for the Chinese, uh, for anyone. This is now actually um, in the world actuarial tables, people who keep track of births and deaths for insurance purposes will tell you, and also for e economy, for the well-being of the economy in the future, they will tell you that birth rates are falling. We used to say, oh, the Japanese uh, had a, uh, a parity. They, they had as many people born as died, and then it changed and they went negative. There were more people dying than being born. The Japanese were not replacing themselves uh, at a level to sustain into the future. And then they noticed, oh, you know what? Taiwan, too. Oh, you know what? China, too. <laughs> so I don't know about India. Uh, there are uh, countries in Africa where more than half of the population is under 30. Uh, I think Nigeria is one of those places. But there are countries in America, uh, America is quickly getting that place, getting there, where we are not replacing ourselves. Um, so it's, that puts a whole different wrinkle on this, uh, the Chinese emphasis over their 5,000 years of, of recorded history, however many thousands before that, that there was just, uh, it was mostly agrarian, mostly the the, the, the livelihood of mm, what, <clears throat> excuse me, 90% of the population was growing food. 90% of the population was engaged in agriculture. And you just needed more hands on the land because lifespan was shorter. Uh, lots of children died uh, of infant diseases. And so it was really important to have a lot of kids, as well as the idea that when you're focused on the clan, on the tribe, whether it's the Wang family, or the Chen family, or the Lin family, or the Zhang family, you need to ensure the future of your clan by passing on 
your, uh, by expanding your family and having lots of sons. Daughters, not so much, sadly. <laughs> the daughters take their husband's surname. Uh, they leave. But all the same, it was important to have children. Okay, that's one point. Point number two, what did they do when they discovered that Mr. Xiao uh, was already 40 years old and had no children? Well, one thing you do is you take a bunch of wives. That's, that's one answer. Um, but it doesn't mention uh, other wives than his own so virtuous man. He and his wife together went to ask Guan Yin Bodhisattva for, uh, for help, to help them conceive and to have a child. And where do we hear about that? Of course, it's the Pu Wenping, the chapter of the Lotus Sutra called the Universal Gateway, Universal Door, where Guan Yin says, uh, if you seek a son, bow, make offerings, and be respectful, display your respects to Guan Yin Bodhisattva, and you will give birth, welcome into your family, a virtuous son who is wise and kind-hearted and doesn't stop there. It's one of the reasons we love Guan Yin Bodhisattva. She says, suppose you decide you want a daughter and that's a perfectly in the sutra. Guan Yin says, yes, that's, that's, daughters are not considered second best. If you want a daughter, bow to, make offerings and respect Guan Yin Bodhisattva, and you will give birth to a daughter who is virtuous and wise and uh, has a uh, distinct character beloved by all she meets. So that's, I really like that aspect, that it's no gender bias in the Lotus Sutra. So that's what they're doing. They went to the Guan Yin Temple to seek for a son. And you know what? Well, what happened? We ready? They, uh, oop, hold on. They, so let me uh, preface story number two by saying that requesting Guan Yin Bodhisattva's aid, according to the sutra, in bestowing a child upon you is part of the bargain. Guan Yin is there for you to make the request. But look at what they did next. They didn't simply let Guan Yin uh, do all the work for them. What did they do? Right? Shin <clears throat> Rebuilding the temple and the bridge. After Mr. and Mrs. Xiao prayed and made vows in their worship of the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara, Guan Yin, they looked around the temple at the Buddha images. They saw the main temple was ruined and useless. The tiles were broken. The walls had fallen over. Water from leaks is sweat. Na. It's the Chinese says sweat, but that's not what it means. Uh, uh, flowed down the faces and bodies of the holy images, doing damage. Because this greatly troubled them, they resolved to repair the temple. They also saw that the eastern bridge of Yongchun Chou had fallen into disrepair over the years. 
those who had used it were worried and afraid of its of it being dangerous. Thereupon, Mr. and Mrs. Yutong hired workmen to reconstruct and restore the temple and the bridge. Okay, take a look at the images here. Now I'm going to go back to my big volume here so I can read the caption over the gate. It says, uh, let's see here, Xin Chun Chou. It says, Ah, Chun, see, Yong Chun, is that it? Yes, Yong Chun Zhou, all right, there it is. So you see in the pictures what's going on here. Um, labor, construction. Uh, there's people working, someone's swinging a hammer, someone is carrying materials, uh, and bringing logs, all manual labor. Here is Master Empty Cloud's future father and mother. Mother's inside the palanquin. Dad's outside stroking his must his beard. And uh, down below, let's see, it's not clear which is the temple and which is the bridge. Maybe this is the bridge on top and the temple is down below. But same, same situation. Here is, oh, here's a monk. So the picture below is the monastery. They're repairing monasteries. And this is considered traditionally the finest of Gongda, the finest kind of merit you can do. So if uh, anybody is looking for a way to quickly develop your own personal merit and virtue, um, get involved in public constructions that uh, benefits everyone who passes over the bridge or uses the highway or stands in the shelter from the sun that you built. Number two, uh, repairing monasteries will take you to the heavens. We all know the story of how uh, Lord Chakra became the god of the heaven of the 33, the 33 devas. It's because he, as before uh, he became a god, the chief among gods, as a human, he saw a monastery that had the identical situation they described here, which is the roof had fallen in and uh, Buddha images were getting moistened and destroyed, uh, spoiled, and nobody could use the monastery for its purpose, which is to cultivate blessings and wisdom. So the, uh, the person, the, the, the human, the future Lord Chakra, uh, spared no expense to rebuild the monastery and in future lives was reborn in the heavens as chief among gods. The, the story goes that the, the woman who was in charge um, found 32 friends who all contributed to build, to uh, uh, rebuilding the temple, to patching the temple and making it beautiful and repairing the Buddha images so that other people could come to the monastery and get fulfillment of their wishes and also create their own uh, gunda, merit and virtue. So that's why this is such a wholesome act to make it possible for others to cross over a river safely. If you're the one whose hand made that possible, ooh, your place in society is assured, your own physical health is assured, you're saved from dangerous situations because you saved others from danger. And if you want the blessings of the heavens, go repair a temple, my goodness. Contribute to the building of a temple. Um, Word to the wise, uh, hint, hint, I've heard that Gold Coast Dharma Realm has just opened up options for putting Guanyin Bodhisattva images in the future Guanyin Hall. Um, I think if you, I don't know, is it the case if you go to GCDR, you can find a, uh, is there a form there that you can uh, sponsor 
Guanyin images for the walls. Maybe uh, somebody who's listening from our Gold Coast community knows. Uh, if, if not, we'll, we'll find out next week and let everybody know that they're, I think they're putting in, what, uh, 10,000 Guanyins or a number of Guanyin images, and you can sponsor them if you care to. So here we go. Yi Huan says, Dong Guan Chao is also called the Tong Xian Chao, Bridge to the Immortals. Nice. So, okay, that's what's going on in this story. Now, look at this. They um, wanted a son because he was childless, he and his wife. And so where did they go? They went to the Guanyin Temple and bowed to Guanyin. They looked around and they saw, ooh, this place is out of repair. It's uh, dysfunctional at the moment. So they thought, this, this is somebody who's got some discernment, some wisdom. They said, okay, we will ask Guanyin Bodhisattva for help uh, getting a child. And further, we're going to plant blessings so that that child will be special. We'll do so by repairing the temple. So not only will our child have a chance to flourish, but also <coughs> all those who come to the monastery will be able to find Guanyin Bodhisattva in comfort, in purity, and their, their wishes will be accomplished. Wow, that's a rare individual who thinks of the welfare of others as they think of their own. Verse, ready? Xiu Fu, Xiu Hui. Xiu Si Miao, Xiu Dao, Xiu De, Xiu Chao Liang, Xiu Yin, Xiu Guo, Xiu Zhu Ji, Xiu Xian, Xiu Shan, Xiu Ren, Xiu Zi Qiang. Beautiful poem. Build up blessings, build up wisdom by building temples and shrines. Build the way, build up virtue by building bridges too. Building causes builds effects. Build it within yourself. Build the wholesome. Build humaneness. Build up your self-reliance. Shifu's poetry is so good like that, that you remember that. And the what's the repeated word here, right? Xiu, cultivate. Look at how he goes. He says, cultivate fu, blessings. Cultivate hui, wisdom. Cultivate si miao. So one word, two word, one word, one word, two words. Blessings, wisdom, monasteries. Again, xiu dao, xiu de, xiu chao liang. So fu, blessings, is matched with dao, the dao. Wisdom is matched with virtue. And monasteries is matched with chao liang, bridges. Okay, line three, look, xiu again. You should all recognize this word by now. You've seen it one, two, three, four, five, six times. Ready? Xiu yin, xiu guo, xiu zhu ji. Cultivate causation, cultivate results, cultivate yourself. Xiu shan, xiu ren, xiu zi qiang. Cultivate goodness matched with cause. Cultivate humaneness matched with results. Cultivate Zhu Ji, eat yourself. Zi Qiang, cultivate strengthening yourself, self-reliance, like Emerson's essay. Isn't that good? So, man, there's so much in these, so many principles. Now, uh, what happened? Oh, we can't tell you what happened. You have to come back next week to find out what happened. Mm -hmm. So... Man, oh man. So this is our, this is how it's going to go. Um, we're going to, probably we can do two, two verses, two stories per week. And the whole thing is just these wonderful stories. Uh, they're the, one of the, you know, kind of in your face, obvious, uh, most startling aspects of the life of Master Empty Cloud was the fact that he lived to be 120. Um, his <laughs> we uh, 
when monks come together, as we just did our ordination at CTDB, and in order to uh, line up correctly, in order to get the respects, the, the proper respect flowing, we always ask how many reigns, how many vasas in Pali, and they say, how many precept years have you been uh, wearing your robe, venerable sir? And you have to ask really clearly because at the beginning, there's a little bit of unclarity, which is when did you first shave your head versus when did you take the complete precepts? In other words, how long was your novice period? So, um, for example, I left home in 1974 and I was a novice for two years. I took the full precepts in 1976. <coughs> and is that the same in the Thai tradition? Is it the same in the Sri Lankan tradition? Well, sometimes yes. Is it the same in the Vietnamese tradition? Mm, sometimes yes. Other times not quite clear. So that's okay, no problem. We, uh, what we discovered um, at this time at our ordination at City of 10,000 Buddhas was kind of startling because we had 11 monks and nuns. We had 11 monks there to uh, um, be the certifiers, the masters and the certifiers. And we discovered that altogether uh, we had 224 precept years uh, amid the monks there. Let's see here. I want to be sure I got the right number here. Uh, let's see here. Come by. Uh, I'm sorry. 422. 422 precept years combined. And that's, yeah, that's, that's a lot. Master Empty Cloud himself had 101 precept years. <laughs> so never mind 11 monks. Single-handedly, he was a quarter of the number of, of precept years that we had. So, remarkable. If you take all of the ordained Buddhist monks in America and add up their precept years together, you, you would certainly uh, not find too many more. Sadly, we're uh, an endangered species. But uh, right there on your screen is an absolutely remarkable uh, Buddhist monk. And his, uh, his accomplishments and his just to, to be a monk for all those years. And here he is at age. Let's see here. This is 118, 118 years. And look at how he is sitting. Uh, he's sitting straight, bolt upright, uh, tilting slightly to his right. But uh, still, he's got a foundation of self-reliance and effort, uh, which he carried through to the end of his life. At, uh, at age 118 at Yunju Shan in True Suchness Monastery in Jiangxi Province, he was doing physical labor out there in the fields with his hoe and his shovel uh, working. That's just, just the way he rolls. So quite wonderful, quite wonderful. So this is... Uh, <clears throat> Every time uh, I look carefully at the life of Master Empty Cloud, uh, all you can say is humility, because this is the model. This is truly the, the example of someone who, uh, took, who recognized the opportunity that he had in encountering the Buddha Dharma, the Buddha's teachings, and took them to the max. He relied upon what? When he, uh, the story goes that when Master Empty Cloud would 
travel through China, he would go to the famous um, historical monasteries that had been there in some cases for 800 years but had fallen into disrepair. You think of Gu Shan and Zhen Ru Si and Yun Xi and uh, uh, Yun Men, all these different famous, <coughs> and Nan Hua Si, the Six Patriarchs Monastery, all these famous temples that had just become ruins. He would walk onto the property carrying a staff. That's all he had in his hand was a staff. He would settle in, attract uh, donors, attract disciples. Hundreds of people would gather. Thousands of people would gather. He would rebuild the monastery and then walk away carrying a staff in his hand. Absolutely unfazed by the fame and the wealth and the attention and energy that he attracted, untouched by it all. He was just there to uh, serve others with the Buddha Dharma. So when you think about my, the question I ask myself is, do I recognize the opportunity in front of me to use the Buddha Dharma to make of my life something valuable in the world? Uh, when you apply that question to this teacher, my goodness, uh, no doubt, no doubt. Okay, so we're going to, right now, uh, do a little bit of cultivating of blessings on our own and recite the names of the seven Tathagatas. Here we go. You ready? <laughs> Join me. Here we go. great companion for the road. Of course, if you have pets, if you have children, if you're concerned about your ancestors, if you got a business or a shop, all of those things benefit by the Buddha's names, the seven Tathagatas. Third time, ready? Namo do bauru lai, namo bau shun lu namo miao su shun lu namo guang bo shun lu namo li bu li lu namo ban lu namo ami to lu lai. I'm going to be back in Australia in uh, three weeks. Can't wait to see the turkeys and the cockatoos and the kookaburras. They won't, uh, they won't show up for a while. They'll uh, wait and see. I have to, have to inspect me in person three times. And then it's like, oh, he's back. So we've done it uh, this way numerous times. And uh, Apparently the report is, after I came back to the States this time, they pretty much dispersed because the food wasn't there every day. And uh, there they will be, because uh, uh, we only have uh, 
lay people coming occasionally to, to stay there. So, of course, the, the animals don't stick around. But um, I'll keep reciting the seven Tathagata's names, and they will show up. Don't you know? Free lunch. I guess so. Okay. So this is how we're going to uh, proceed. And I wanted to remind folks also, since we're looking at our own websites here, I want to send you all to dharmaradio.org. Here's Dharma Radio. The uh, English, it's on, currently it's in Chinese. Let's look it over to English. There we go. Um, particularly good karma music. Now, we are going to be finishing up my brand new album this weekend. Uh, it's called Urban Lotus, the uh, a little piece of purity in the center of the city. Um, we're going to be posting it so you can do more good deeds. Write them here, share your good deed, whatever it was, and take your pick from uh, Buddhist music and Catholic music. Spirit in the Cave of the Heart is from Father Cyprian Concilio. Here's uh, Dharma Radio, the Buddhist, Buddhist Literature and the Songs, Part 2, um, and Buddhist Stories for Awakening. There's number one, Paramita, then Brian Conroy's stories, The Light That Never Dies, and soon Urban Lotus will be here. Share your good deed. Tell us what it was. Add one plus one. Tell us what, what that amounts to, and we will post your story here. Uh, also the same in Chinese. 你们如果做善事,善业音乐 那个project,那个光碟,然后我们送给你,同时呢,我们都可以看到你分享的故事,大家都可以看到,你可以鼓励人家跟你一起做善事, uh, uh, okay, that's the plan, Dharma Radio, so there it is, I hope folks will take advantage of the opportunity, alrighty, now I also want to mention that there will be a, let's see, will the Song of the Vegetables in the Garden be in the album? Ooh, excellent idea. Excellent idea. Yeah, that's Brian Conroy's song. We co-wrote that. Yep, I'll get that ready. Good idea. Um, <clears throat> we have a concert, a Buddhist music concert coming up on the 27th, on Sunday. It'll be at 7 p.m. We will be live streaming it on Dharma Realm Live. Um, this poster is not current any longer because we've added a musician. Uh, James Barras uh, from Spirit Rock will be uh, also joining us singing Buddhist music. Uh, for some wonderful reason, Berkeley, California is blessed with uh, folk singers who have become Buddhists and who sing Buddhist music. So we're going to put together our talents in a concert at the Berkeley Monastery. It's going to be Sunday. Those of you who listen to City of 10,000 Buddhas Sunday night sutra lecture will also get to hear the concert. We're going to be streaming our Sunday night lecture uh, as stream, streaming the concert for the Sunday night lecture. So there you go, just to let you know. We'll announce that one more time next Friday as well. And then uh, so you'll get the... Anybody who missed this in, this announcement this time can hear it next week as well. Alrighty. Let us now dedicate merit. What do you say? Practice the dedications of the Bodhisattva. Make a wish and send it out. Here we go. Share the fruits of peace with hearts of good.
hear and see how hands and hearts can find in giving unity. They are miles away to great compassion, wisdom, and to joy. They kindness find reward. They all who sorrow leave their grief and pain. May this boundless light dispel the darkness of our endless night. Because our hearts are one, this world of pain turns into paradise. May all become compassionate and wise. and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. And before we're done, we can bow to the Buddhas. three times and we'll come down together. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. All right, that'll do it for us for this week. See you all next week. Amitofo. Bye, everybody.